By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how write and read operations are carried out in DRAM and the reasons behind DRAM's slow speed. Let's start off with the cell structure. A DRAM cell consists of an access transistor and a capacitor. The capacitor holds the data, while the access transistor allows access to it. As discussed in the previous video, the link for which is in the description below, DRAM requires a refresh process. Since DRAM is composed of many cells, refreshing each cell individually would consume all our time, leaving none for access operations. Fortunately, that's not the case. The cells are arranged in a two-dimensional array, which means we can refresh an entire row of cells at once. Each row of memory cells in DRAM is linked to a unique line. This control line allows us to select all the cells in a row simultaneously. In computing terminology, a word refers to a group of bits. And this line allows us to select a group of bits or cells. That's why it is called a word line. Thus, all the access transistors in a row switch on upon asserting the word line. There should also be a provision to transfer data or bit to and from the capacitor of each cell. And for that, there is a vertical line which is known as data line or bit line. Having known both these lines, let's understand how write operation is carried out. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's assume we want to write a bit value of 1 to this cell in the middle. First, the word line of the row containing this cell is asserted. Thus, the entire row gets selected. Next, the value to be written, which in this case is 1, is placed on the bit line corresponding to that cell. This charges the capacitor and at the completion of the charging process, we get a bit value of 1. Now for bit value of 0, the capacitor is made to discharge via the bit line. So that's write operation. Next comes the hold operation, which simply means that the cell should be able to retain its value. But we know that the capacitor cannot hold the charge forever. That's why refresh is needed after approximately every 64 milliseconds. But what do we mean by refresh? In this context, refresh essentially means reading the content of the cell and then writing that value back into it. As we've already covered the write operation, let's proceed towards the read operation. Now, I want you to pay close attention as this operation can be a little tricky to understand. I'll walk you through the entire story of read operation in DRAM in three steps. We'll increase the complexity with each new step. Let's start with a simple approach. Imagine we want to read the content of a specific cell in the memory. Now let's zoom in on that cell. The first step is precharge the bit line, which means set the bit line to half the supply voltage or VDD by 2. Then disconnect the precharging circuitry and allow the bit line to float. Next, assert the word line. Now this connects the capacitor to the bit line. Let's assume the cell holds a bit value of 1. Once the capacitor is connected to the bit line, the charge on the capacitor starts flowing to the bit line, causing a slight increase in the bit line voltage. Finally, this small change in bit line voltage is detected and further amplified by a differential sense amplifier. An increase in the voltage gets amplified to VDD. Now in case of bit value of zero, the charge will flow from the bit line towards the capacitor causing a slight decrease in the bit line voltage. And this slight decrease in voltage is then detected and amplified by the differential sense amplifier. 
slight decrease in voltage gets translated to a bit value of 0. That was the basic explanation. Now let's add some more details by moving on to the second step. The bit line is connected to all the cells in a column. Basically, a lot of them. This introduces something known as parasitic capacitance. So during the pre-charge step, we actually charge the bit line capacitor until BDD by 2. Now let's try to visualize this setup. We have a bit line capacitor, a transistor switch that is currently open and a cell capacitor. Let's assume that the cell capacitor is charged to VDD or holds a bit value of 1. And we know that the bit line capacitor is charged to VDD by 2. So the initial charge of the circuit can be given as CD times VDD plus CB times VDD by 2. Now as you grasp this concept, keep an eye on the graph displayed on the side. Pay attention to waveforms here as they'll help you understand what's happening more clearly. Now when the word line is asserted for the read operation, the switch closes, connecting both the capacitors. As the cell capacitor is at VDD and the bit line capacitor is at VDD by 2, charge starts flowing from higher potential to lower potential. Or the cell capacitor starts discharging causing an increase in the charge of the bit line capacitor. This flow continues until an equipotential value, or in other words, until the time the potential on both the sides becomes the same or equal. Thus, charge sharing process continues until the time the voltage becomes the same or equal on both the sides. The final charge of the circuit can be given as CD plus CV times VF, where VF is the final voltage, which is the same on both the sides. Now let's quickly grab a pen and paper to figure out the values of final voltage and increase in voltage. Now the total charge is conserved, so we can conclude that initial charge is equal to final charge, or the charge lost by the cell capacitor equals to the charge gained by bit line capacitor. Now change of voltage or delta V can be written as final voltage minus initial voltage. So we can substitute the value of Vf from the previous equation. Let's keep on solving this. Finally, delta V is equal to 1 by 1 plus CB by CD times half VDD. So, this is the value of delta V or change in voltage. Now, as you can see here, delta V depends on the ratio CB by CD. And CB by CD is generally large as the bit line capacitance is large. Thus, we get a very small change in bit line voltage. Typical value can be anywhere around 100 millivolts. Now, it is the job of the differential sense amplifier to detect this slight change in voltage and amplify it. Thus, after the charge sharing process, the sense amplifier is enabled, as seen in the graph, to detect the change in voltage. And as covered before, slight increase in voltage gets amplified to 1 and a slight decrease gets amplified to 0. During the charge sharing process, there is a change in the charge of the cell capacitor as seen here. The capacitor loses charge when it contains a 1 and it gains charge when it contains a 0. Either way, the charge gets disturbed during the read operation. Thus, reads in DRAM are destructive. Thus, after charge sharing, a write operation becomes a must to restore the charge on the capacitor. 
For this, the output of the sense amplifier is connected to the bit line. For a bit value of 1, we get a slight increase in bit line voltage, which is amplified to VDD. And this amplified output restores the charge on cell capacitor by charging it via the bit line. So we can conclude that read operation is nothing but read, which is charge sharing, plus write or restoring the charge. But hold on. Do you remember the refresh operation? It is nothing but read plus write operation. Or we can say that it is equal to charge sharing plus write operation. Or we can conclude that refresh is nothing but read operation comprising of charge sharing plus write operation carried out every 64 milliseconds in DRAM. Congratulations on making it this far. Just a few more minutes and you will realize how complex the internal circuitry of DRAM really is. Let's move on to the third or final step. Let's move towards the end of bit line. Here you will find differential sense amplifier. It has two inputs. One is the reference voltage and the other is the bit line voltage. Reference voltage is provided by the bit line on the other side. Anyway, the key point is due to pre-charge, the voltage on both the inputs is VDD by 2. Now, even a slight fluctuation on either input results in a change in output. But do you know how do we get the exact same voltage that is VDD by 2 on both the inputs? How is this practically made possible? For that, we use a precharge and equalizer circuit. And this circuit is also present towards the end of the bit line. I'll call this the PNE circuit. Now let's look at the PNE circuit in more detail. It contains three transistors controlled by an enable signal P. Transistors Q1 and Q2, which are connected to bit line and reference lines, respectively, are also connected to a bias of VDD by 2 on the other side. Now when the enable signal is turned on, all the three transistors switch on. Q1 and Q2 set both the ends to VDD by 2. So these two transistors facilitate pre-charging process. Now there's also one more transistor in the middle, which is Q3. And there's something special about this transistor. The current flow through this one stops only when the voltage on both the ends becomes equal. And in this case, it is VDD by 2. So Q3 is an equalizer. And due to Q3, we get the exact same voltage on both the inputs. Now that we've covered the PNE circuit, let's zoom in on the differential sense amplifier. Have you seen the circuit before? If yes, then let me know in the comments where. So here we have two cross-coupled inverters and two transistors, M5 and M6, that control these two inverters via a sense amplifier enable signal S. Now we know that after pre-charge, both the bit line and reference line are at VDD by 2. The enable signal S is off. So both the inverters float at VDD by 2, which was enforced on them during pre-charge. Let's see a simplified version of the circuit. So here we have two inverters and VDD by 2 on both the sides. Note that these inverters are not in a stable state. Instead, they both are in a metastable state. What do we mean by that? For that, let's check the voltage transfer plot of these inverters. Now, the shape of this curve resembles a butterfly. And that is the reason why it is known as butterfly curve. The metastable point is in the middle. So, our inverters are in this particular state, the state that corresponds to this point. Now, the metastable state is a highly unstable state, which means even a small voltage perturbation at either of the inputs gets amplified, causing the operation point to shift to one of the stable states. Now, let's try to integrate this new information with our existing knowledge about the read operation. And let's consider the read operation again. Assume that this time the cell contains a bit value of 1. Now we have a bit line and a reference line, both of which are pre-charged by pre-charge and equalizer circuit to VDD by 2. 
the word line is asserted, which connects the cell capacitor to the bit line. The charge sharing process begins between the cell capacitor and the bit line capacitor. And at the end of this process, we get a slight increase in bit line voltage, also known as delta V. We've also calculated its value in second step. After the charge sharing process, the sense amplifier is switched on by applying the enable signal. Now on one side, we have VDD by 2 plus delta V and on the other side, we have VDD by 2, which means metastable state is disturbed and this causes the inverters to move to a stable state. Thus on the bit line where slight increase in voltage occurs, we get VDD, while on the reference line, the voltage drops to zero. Now you can check the voltage transfer plot again at this point to understand this whole change better. Reference line is now at zero and bit line is at VDD. Thus that's how a slight increase in bit line voltage gets amplified to VDD. Finally, the output of the sense amplifier connected to the bit line restores the lost charge of the cell. Now before beginning the next read cycle, the bit line and reference line are again precharged to VDD by 2. So that concludes the read operation. Now before I end this video, I'd like to ask you two questions. First, have you seen the circuit before? If yes, where? And the second question is, why do we precharge the bit line? Think about it. Leave your answers in the comments section. I'll pin the correct answer. Hope you found the video useful. If you did, then please drop a like, share this video and consider supporting the channel through Super Thanks. Don't forget to comment your answers. Also, you can leave one line or one word to sum up how you felt about this video. And I'll see you in the next one.